Don't apologize for Jesus. Let's walk across the bridge. Um, there's a lot of people out there that uh, want to kind of act like we should all just sort of dialogue and we should all kind of get along and let's not judge anybody else and whatever. Um, but uh, what you have to understand is if you're saved, Jesus Christ didn't say we can have a system that is uh, open to other religions and whatever else. Um, no, he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus had a moral absolutism. Okay, he left, left no room open for compromise. And a lot of people that uh, want to talk about dialogue and whatever else, they want to compromise. Um, <clears throat> and you'll see these fake ministries where they'll come out and they will say, um, you know, well, we just... We want to have an open dialogue on this issue and whatever else. Um, but that's not what Jesus set up. You read through the book of Acts, they were being thrown in jail. And Jesus was breaking them out of jail too, I might add. But it was a absolute type of a thing. Including, I think it's in Acts chapter 4, where uh, they said, you know, basically the Sanhedrin comes and they say, you know, didn't we command you? You're not supposed to speak in this name. And they said, we ought to obey God rather than men. They didn't say, well, okay, we're, I didn't mean to offend you. If I've offended you, I'm very sorry. Uh, certainly my belief in Jesus is, is very strong. He's my Lord, he's my savior, but I perfectly understand if you want to reject him. They didn't do that. I'll show you what I have to scale here. Go up. The things I do for my viewers. Oh boy. It's Sunday morning, by the way. So, <clears throat> you say, why aren't you in church right now, Brother Brian? You should be in church. I am. In fact, I never leave the church. I'm in the church of Jesus Christ all the time. If you don't understand Bible doctrine, then I feel sorry for you. Um, a Christian is never out of church. And I'd rather be out here in what God made than in some stupid building that has no basis in scripture. Um, although you do get some good tax breaks with the building system. That is true. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me give you a couple little facts and statistics up to another rock here. Look, it's Iraq. Got the terrible jokes going this morning. But, um, oh, show you this real quick. Down there, pretty good. But uh, I want you to think about a few things, okay? About Jesus and why we shouldn't apologize for Jesus Christ. Number one, time was changed to match his birth. You know why? Because he's not like other leaders of other religions. Jesus Christ is God. Get back to that here in a minute. Number two, millions have died for him. Um, the most persecuted religion in all of history uh, is not the Jews. The Jews, quite frankly, a lot of times have deserved the persecution that came to them because of they get into usury and the people finally get mad and they finally rise up against them. And there are Jewish rabbis that admit that. I'm not being anti-Semitic at all. Uh, that's why they've gotten thrown out of countries. Um, Christians, by and large, are, I mean, real Christians, not Catholics, I'm saying Christians. Um, they're good people. They're salt of the earth, you know, literally. <laughs> If the salt have lost his savor, it's good for nothing. And whatever the Bible talks about likens us to salt. But Christians are supposed to be salt of the earth. Good people. Hard working. Um, and everything else. But uh, down through the centuries, you'll never see people that were persecuted as much. I mean, the infamous Olympics thing. Which the Olympics is a pagan ceremony. 
Uh, again, I don't understand people. Oh, the Olympic ceremony in Paris, France. It was so blasphemous and whatever. Well, yeah, it's the Olympics. It's a pagan ceremony. It's a pagan thing. You know, you look at the guy who started the modern Olympic thing back in the, what was it, early 1900s or something. I don't have it memorized. Please forgive me. If you know, put it in the comment section down below. But the guy who started it, if I remember correctly, I think he had his heart removed and uh, put into a Masonic obelisk. If I remember reading that story correctly years ago. Um, but certainly, you have the concept of all the nations coming together, sort of a modern Tower of Babel, and they all come together and put aside their differences to play sports. Hmm, a new world order. That's right. But uh, who, who would, else would they attack but Christians? Of course they're going to attack Christians. And uh, they didn't actually attack Christians because they attacked a Catholic painting. Uh, the Last Supper thing, it didn't look like the painting and whatever. And um, so actually, if you really want to get down to it, the attack was done on purpose towards Roman Catholicism. Why? Well, I don't know, to ignite the right. That's what it was all about. That's why I didn't really mention a whole lot about it because yeah, you know, Christianity, quote unquote Christianity was attacked, but it was really just Roman Catholicism done on purpose to incite the right, the Roman Catholic people out there to go out and slaughter uh, the perverts, which is coming in the future. That will be part of the Antichrist system. But um, point number three, why we should not apologize for Jesus Christ is because Jesus is God. Um, Jesus is not a created being. Um, the Godhead consists of Son, Father, and Holy Ghost. Three parts of one being. That's what the Bible teaches. The Bible does not teach Trinitarianism. And you know, it takes a long time to understand, to go through all the scriptures, because people try to bring their traditions of men into the scriptures, and it doesn't work. And, um, so as a result, uh, you know, it leads to confusion. Well, God's not the author of confusion. And a lot of people, I know somebody in the comments said, you know, just take it easy with us and whatever. We're trying to learn about the Godhead doctrine. Don't be arrogant and call us names or whatever. I'm not calling the people who are learning. I'm not calling them names. I'm calling the people that should know better and just continue to attack. And I corner them, show them that their Trinitarianism stuff is wrong. And they come back with another angle and another angle. And then, okay, gloves come off. I'm not going to be nice to them. But the point is, if you don't believe that Jesus is God, then you can't be saved. Because if Jesus was just a created being, then his blood doesn't mean anything. Acts chapter 20 talks about that God purchased the church with his own blood. Well, that's not correctly translated. Okay, well then, go believe in a man. You know, see, time was reset because God was manifest in the flesh. That's why time was reset. Jesus Christ, like I said, if he's not God, then you're wasting your time. Uh, well, he's a created being and, you know, whatever. I've answered all the arguments. If you really want the truth, you'll find the truth on my channel, by my book, on the Godhead issue, the Godhead doctrine, it's called. Read it, study it, look at the scriptures, see if these things are so. That's what I can tell you about that. All right. Um, another proof that uh, why we shouldn't make excuses for Jesus and apologize and, well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend. Thousands of songs have been written about the Lord Jesus Christ. Thousands. So many old hymns. Jesus is all the world to me. You know, um, what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, um, there is a name I love to hear. I long to sing its worth. It sounds like music in mine ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me and on and on and it's funny too by the way i'll be doing a study coming up here 
on uh, this pagan Talmudic uh, Jew system. These wicked people, they don't even want to say God's name. Pretend that they don't know it, so they just say the name. We worship the name. <laughs> the name? You worship the name? That's kind of weird. See, I've never heard that. It's called Hashem, Hebrew. Hashem in Hebrew means the name. That's how pagan and superstitious, superstitious these people are and how lost they are. But we're not sure what God's name is, so we'll just say the name. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's rather warped. The God's chosen people, and they don't even know his name when the Old Testament clearly spells it out and links it to the New Testament. In the Old Testament, got a good study coming for you on that. But thousands of songs have been written about this one man. Where are the songs about Muhammad or Buddha or Krishna or any of the popes? Jesus is the name. Okay? The Bible is the greatest book ever written. Period. The most copied, the most printed, the most published, the most circulated book in the history of the world. And the King James Bible is the pinnacle. They've come out and they've tried to corrupt it and pervert it and twist it. But the King James Bible still stands as the greatest book of all time. Um, and I don't say that because I'm prejudiced or whatever else. I grew up with new versions. I grew up going to a church building that questioned the King James Bible from the pulpit. Took down, you know, tore down the King James Bible. Um, and yet I came out being a Bible-believing Christian because the Lord saved me. And you'll be a Bible believer as well when the Lord saves you. Because it's not logical to not be a Bible-believing Christian. Uh, I reject uh, any Bible being God's perfect written word, but I, yet I base my salvation on the Scriptures. Okay, that doesn't work. Um, number six. Jesus, his rebuke of the Jews is 100% accurate. You know, these Jews, they, uh, they rejected him back then in the first century and they conspired with Pontius Pilate to put Jesus Christ to death. It was an illegal trial. And uh, Pilate knew it, but they were going over his head. You know, you're not Caesar's friend. We'll, we'll tell Caesar on you. And then, you know, our business connections and everything else we have, which Jesus was exposing, that's why they hated him so much. And, uh, you know, our business connections, we'll, we'll see to it that, that the money we lose because of this whole thing, it'll come back on you, Pontius Pilate. So, they conspired together. It wasn't all the Jews and it wasn't all the Romans. It was both. Both parties were involved. You say, no, it was all the Jews. It was all those Jews. Okay, did the Jews, uh, was it their form of crucifixion did they swing the hammers did they um whip him no they didn't it was romans roman authority but jewish conspiracy the fifth kingdom if you don't understand that but um that's what they did um but it was because jesus knew about their sins and he was coming and he was saying you compass land and sea to make one proselyte and when he's made you make him twofold more the child of hell than ye yourselves Jews didn't like that. Um, see the buildings of the temple here? One stone shall not be left on another to all be, you know, it's all going to be thrown down, Matthew chapter 24, early on there, there. And the Jews of today, they say, that's a prophecy where Jesus failed because the wall's still there. Well, the wall of Fort Antonia, yes. The Roman fort that they go over and they bow to and they're doing their thing and they stick, slick the little, stick the little pieces of paper in there. That's a Roman fort. Quite telling. They're bowing to a Roman fort. I did a whole study on that as well. You can watch. Uh, the actual temple was in the city of David. It was not over there where the Roman fort is, Fort Antonia. But we have to build, rebuild our temple on top of the Roman foundation. Huh. Interesting. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Unless you're part of the mingled Jewish system. Hmm, the miry clay that the Bible warns about in the end times. So, that's why they killed him. And yet everything that Jesus said about the Jews that they were involved with and whatever else, it's all come to pass. Hmm. Real salvation can't be repented of. Yeah. When you gen genuinely get saved, 
um, you've come to the end of yourself. There isn't anything left to go back to. You can struggle with the old man, you can go back and you can get messing around with sin and everything. I get it. I do it myself. Sometimes I get stupid and I listen to music from my past. Just, oh, I'll just hear that country song or something or whatever else. Stupid. And I start to get messed up, kind of backslide a little bit, get out of fellowship with the Lord a little and feel pretty miserable and rotten and depressed and everything else. And I have to con confess it and forsake it and move forward and say, sorry about that, Lord. I'll get back to listening to the hymns and singing the hymns and get back to doing what I know is right. Sorry I'm such a stupid loser sometimes, Lord. <laughs> and uh, give you a verse of scripture here. I'm trying to get to it, turning with one hand. My little mini Bible here that I carry with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse uh, 10. Very important verse of scripture here. For godly sorrow, let me stop here, worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Um, key scripture. Godly sorrow, when you are truly sad, not just I've messed up my life, oh woe is me, nobody likes me, I don't have any friends. No, when you start to realize, I've sinned against God. Oh boy, hell is real, I believe hell is real. I deserve to go to hell. Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And you start to just weep over your sins and, you, and you, you're so bothered by your sins, you say, there isn't anything for me. God, please save me. And you know, you cry out to the Lord, broken, contrite spirit, and you genu genuinely get saved. And somebody comes along and they say, hey, how about coming back to the world? Are you kidding me? After all that I've done to hurt the Lord. You know, there was a song years ago, I think Randy Travis sang it when he supposedly got saved. I think it was just worldly sorrow, honestly, but but it was about, I don't want to drive another nail. And I know there was an, another country singer or two that sang it, you know. And, and um, you know, I used to cry when I'd hear that song because I drove a lot of nails into the Lord. I hurt him badly with my sin. And you know what, when I, when I got saved, genuinely born again, uh, hey, let's go on back to the world. No, I fear God now sermon coming out on that soon too should you fear God or love God the answer is yes <laughs> uh, be talking about that in another upcoming study I actually wrote the notes for that study uh, oh let's see 2001 that'd be 23 years ago never preached it wrote the notes the back of my Bible the notebook area of the back of my Bible 23 years later, I'm finally making it into a sermon. <laughs> Things come up occasionally. You get busy, but I'm finally getting around to it, so it'll be a good study. Fearing God versus loving God. But um, for me to go back to the world, you know, kind of like the uh, disciples at one point, you know, in John chapter 6, a whole bunch of Jesus' disciples leave him. John chapter 6, verse 66, when his disciples leave him. And he turns to his 12 disciples and he says, basically, I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically says, are you going to leave me too? You also going to leave me? And I think Peter says, where would we go? Thou only hast the words of eternal life. There's no place to go. I mean, I'm just going to shut down the ministry and I'll, I'll just uh, delete everything I've ever done and, and uh, get rid of my Bible and... and um, not sing it, you know, get rid of my hymn books and all my Christian books and everything else. And I'll just come out here and do what? What is there in life without Jesus Christ? I've tried everything else. I've tried the, tried the cheap thrills and the rock music and the pretty girls and, you know, all the stuff out that's out there. This world doesn't have anything to offer me. I'm not interested. Um... The Lord's given me so much, answered so many of my prayers, I've lost count. And you want me to go back to the world?
You don't know me too good. But, uh, you know, I just want to warn about this whole apologetics thing and whatever. You know, let's apologize for Jesus. Let's, let's uh, have good dialogues and whatever else. The Bible-believing method is you go into a city, so to speak, and if the people receive you, if they want to hear about Jesus, then tell them about Jesus. If they don't, then you say, okay, have a nice day, and you walk off. Because if the Holy Spirit is not there convicting that person, you are wasting your time, and all that you're going to do is create a false convert. The sorrow of the world. Well, I've been a celebrity, and I've, I've messed up, and I've been involved in all kinds of sick, perverted stuff, and been on drugs and alcohol and everything, and, and I heard about Jesus. Oh, and it's a glorious thing and whatever else. And then they're with Jesus for a while. A Jesus of their own creation. But they stay in the world. Keep one foot in the world and one foot with Jesus. Doesn't work. And before long, oh, they're back to the world again. You see these people, you know. Oh, I was a Christian pastor for years and now I'm an atheist. Well, I was a Christian pastor for years before I converted to Judaism. Okay, why are you going backward? <laughs> you know. Looking for some satanic uh, messaging when you when you reverse. <laughs> back masking like they used to do on these cassette tapes. You'd play the tape backwards and you'd hear satanic messages. You know. That's kind of the what happens if you go from being a Christian to now you're a, a Orthodox Talmudic observing Torah Jew or whatever. And uh, I'll be coming out with some good stuff on that too. That whole movement. Uh, I have some I have four big studies to do right now, but before we went to work today at the office, um, we decided to come out here and go for a hike. I know a lot of people like the walk and talks. I like them too. It's important for me to get out here and get some exercise in my advanced years. <laughs> oh boy. But, uh, just an amazing time I had with the Lord, getting back with Him yesterday and listening to some hymns and singing some hymns and, and uh, just feel His presence coming back. And He never leaves, but you know, just a disappointment and whatever else. If you've been married for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. You get have an argument with your wife and you're just kind of not in fellowship. That great, still married. She's still there in the house, still cooking for you, still doing whatever else. Still your friend, but you want to restore that fellowship. And you finally go and you say, I'm sorry for what I did. And uh, you talk it out and you hug, give a, each other a kiss or whatever. And, and back to the fellowship again, restored fellowship. Um, you see, I've tried other types of things. I tried false Christianity for many years. Church building Christianity. Didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, the day came when godly sorrow came upon me. And I started to realize I wasn't as good as I thought. And um, I, got, I got born again. Lord saved me. I called upon him to save me and he did. And uh, everything changed for me. Not all at once. Again, you know, I'm not the same man that I was last year. And I've been saved now for a long time. Um, a very long time. But um, I've been around Christianity all, Christianity all my life. But it wasn't until, oh, I guess I was 26 years old, so 23 years ago, I got saved and I started to study and research and the Word of God became alive to me for the first time ever. I understand God's Word, I understood God's Word. And I got rid of my old NIV that I used for many years, 15 years I think it was, 16 years, something like that, 15, 16 years. 
and I got a King James Bible. I got God's true book. And uh, boy, my life changed. And um, there's times I've failed the Lord. There's times the Lord gave me an opportunity to witness for Him, and I didn't take it. And I felt like dirt afterwards. I felt terrible. Now, I'm ready. Uh, I put magnets on my vehicles, so it reminds me not to act like an idiot on the road anymore like I used to do. You know, no more road rage, Brian. Uh, not good, not becoming of a Christian, much less a preacher. Kind of an interesting tree there. Like that. Actually saw a thing one time that Native American people used to do that um, as a way to mark a trail. They would bend a tree in a certain way and the tree would grow that way. Last for hundreds of years like that. Doubt that that's one of them, but interesting nonetheless. Beautiful river out there. Savoy's River. Um, but anyhow, I could just keep ranting here, but I just like to take my viewers along for these hikes. And uh, really beautiful spot to hike. But the temptation comes in, you know, to keep your mouth shut about Jesus, kind of be a Superman Christian, you know, that you, you know, you kind of hide what you're, what you are here, you know. No, the best thing to do is just be, put yourself out there and say, I'm going to take some shame and I'll take some reproach and I'll take people attacking me and whatever. Because after all, look at what Jesus had to suffer when he was on the cross, stripped naked beaten to within an inch of his life people mocking him people spitting on him ripping out the his beard hair he had to go through it i'll not be ashamed of him and i'm going to be doing a study on the whole noahide law thing which is completely 100 percent satanic and i'll be proving it um we'll talk about it and uh Oh, we want you to, you know, Jesus is a false idol. Um, and you're going to have to reject him if you want to be part of the future kingdom. That's what I had to say to you. <laughs> I'm a Christian. I, can, I don't use profanity. So uh, that's what I'll say. As a, being a nice way to say it. Hey, you better be careful. They could kill you. Go ahead. Send me to heaven. I'm not worried about you. Uh, I think about my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, I use a King James Bible. Therefore, I say Jesus. I don't get some kind of magic, mystical uh, brownie points or something by saying Yeshua. And then you go from Yeshua to Yahashua. <laughs> Irritates me so much. People don't even know what they're saying. They just repeat things because they hear it and they think, oh, it sounds really important. Well, Yahashua is Joshua. So if you're saying that you believe that Yahashua is your savior, well then Joshua is your savior. That's kind of an issue. And I understand that Jesus and Joshua are both derived from a similar word, but they're not the same. Uh, your Bible does not say um, that Joshua died on the cross. It says Jesus died on the cross. And I've been involved in the spiritual realm, actually dealing uh, physically with spirits manifesting themselves. And I've used the name Jesus. And uh, the spirits go away. Um, I've seen the power of the name of Jesus. So I'm not going to apologize. And these idiots come out and they say, well, did you know that Jesus is, it's a, you know, Jesus and whatever. And, and that there's no, they didn't say that letter J up until recently. What, there's some cultures and some languages that still don't say letter J. They say it as a yuh. You know, so what? I'm an English-speaking Christian. I use the greatest Bible that ever showed up on this earth. The King James Bible. Go fly a kite. Go take a long walk off a short pier. Okay? <laughs> Shut up. I don't care what you have to say. Your opinions don't mean anything to me. Well, we can prove that Jesus didn't fulfill all the messianic prophecies and whatever. Yeah, uh, because the Bible doesn't say that he's going to fulfill everything on the first time he comes. Duh. They are going to reject the stone. 
the head of the corner, which is exactly what they did. And there's a whole lot of other things I'll be bringing out in my studies coming up. Jesus in the Torah will be another study. So look for that one. But uh, you want me to apologize for Jesus and bow down to your system and I can't speak about Jesus because it might offend a Jew. I don't think so. Um, I don't care how powerful they get. Oh, they're in positions of government and they can send out their goons and whatever. Go ahead, send them all. Send out your goon squad. I don't fear any of them. Fear the God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, um, but these sermons will be an encouragement to you if you're saved. And I uh, don't know when I'm going to get to them. Because today we're kind of taking a day off a little bit here. And I'm doing these videos and I'll go to the office and edit, render, and upload. Uh, but I just want to encourage my saved brethren out there. Don't ever make an excuse for Jesus. Don't ever apologize for Jesus. The greatest book that ever showed up on this earth is an English Bible, the King James Bible. Uh, I like to call it the King Jesus version. King James Bible is not actually in the real title for it. It was authorized version. So if they can, people can nickname it the King James Bible, I can nickname it the King Jesus version. King Jesus Bible. Um, and I have a whole series of studies on that, too, if you want to watch those. But um, I don't like to see the whole Yeshua thing. If you're Hebrew, if you're a Jew, say Yeshua. If you're not a Jew, then don't say Yeshua. Okay? So that will be it. Working through, walking through burdock acres here. Burdock is this plant with these big burrs on it. When they dry, they stick to everything. Kind of a pain. But burdock root is a very highly medicinal plant. Very highly medicinal. I guess you'd call it an herb. And uh, good for what ails you. A liver detoxer and a bunch of other things. God's creation is such an amazing thing when you get to studying it. But if you live in the city and you don't ever get out around God's creation and all you see is what man made, you might be tempted to start to reject Jesus. And uh, the fact is everything is created by Jesus. And by him all things consist. Kind of an interesting thing. You'd think that people might want to be a little bit more careful about what they say about their, their life. Literally their lifeline. What keeps you alive is Jesus. I suggest you get to know him. Read about him in the King James Bible. Try it out. Okay? Come to the point where the Holy Spirit starts to knock on your heart. Uh, the Bible talks about the Lord knocking and saying, If any man here, open the door, I'll come in. And we'll sup with him. Sit down and you can have a you can ask your questions then. Don't ask the questions before you get saved because you won't understand. You have to do it God's way. Alright? So, just about back to the parking lot. So I'm going to stop here. And um, just to see everybody in the upcoming videos, sermons. If you could please pray for me. I would appreciate that. You know, a lot of times my depression um, gets so deep and so severe. It's very hard for me to get anything done. And uh, sometimes it's self-caused, self-induced because I get away from the Lord and do things that are secular. But uh, other times, I got people over here in the woods that are coming to attack me. Oh no. My camera's pointed the other way, you don't have to worry. My wife and my son and my dog, Luther. But, um, so that will be it. And, uh, see everybody in upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching.